welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And let's talk about Barbera di Alba. Right there, Mott, zooming in. Uh, became DOC'd in 1970, became a DOCG in 2008. And, um, and that's just the classification levels and has become a very serious part of Piedmont, uh, the, the beautiful place that brings you Barolo and Barbaresco. Um, some of the more interesting wines in all of Italy, in my opinion, I, I think they are uh, undervalued in a lot of ways, though starting to get pricey when you get into some of the more premium stuff. And today we focus on premium Barbera di Asti from premium producers, 24 and 36, 38, excuse me, US dollars. So far from inexpensive wines, um, but really, really, really amazing wines that go tremendous with varieties of foods, uh, clearly tremendous um, partners with the, you know, classic old world Italian cuisine, uh, really elegant wines, and I'm just really excited because two producers that I go bonkers, I don't even know what that was, I apologize, but go bonkers over, uh, and let's get right into it. So the Sigliuti uh, Campras Barbera di Alba 2007, let's zoom in here, Ma. $24, 91 points Antonio Galloni. By uh, law, uh, of the DOCG, 85% of this wine has to be Barbera, uh, with the remaining 15% conceivably allowed to be uh, three varietals, including Dolcetto, which is often a uh, partner in crime, uh, Gragliano, and Friese. Uh, so really kind of intriguing wines. Barbera, Matt, zoom in here. They can get really dark. Um, and they can also be, by the way, labeled Superiore if they... Uh, spend a year in barrel, six months of which have to be in oak, and the alcohol content is at least 11.5%, uh, uh, excuse me, 12.5%. Um, this is 14.5 in alcohol, and the uh, second wine um, is also 14.5, so these are really super high-end Barbera di Asti. Now, don't get it twisted, as we like to say, uh, in the wine streets. The Barbera di Asti's are available uh, for... Um, a time out. These are both Barbera di Alba, and I've been saying Barbera di Asti the whole time, but I've been meaning to say Alba because I'm just being a little weird. Didn't I say Asti a whole bunch of times? I love Barbera di Asti. I'm not sure. Anyway, as we don't edit, you know it. I've been meaning to say di Alba. <laughs> Listen, the Jets won a big game. I think I'm getting a little freaky, but I did say di Asti, I thought, a few times. Ma? Uh, I definitely said it there at the I end. You said di Alba at the beginning. Okay, no problem. Well, anyway. Um, the Alba, Barbera di Asti is also uh, from the Asti part of Piedmont, great wines, very similar, you know, but this is all about Barbera di Alba, uh, I apologize. Um, just really, really great uh, wines in my opinion and, and go great with the Italian cuisine as I said. And so let's see what's going on here with the, the let's give it a sniffy sniff. And they get very earthy, Mott, smell this. You get these really earthy wines when you get into some of these top producers in these price points. As I was saying before, I kind of had that freak out moment with the Asti. You can get Barbera di Alba in a, in a price point that's 15 to $20, but as you start getting into the quality levels, you will start pushing the price point. Again, 24 bones, which is a great number, 24, Darrell Rivas, true shutdown corner, and 91 points, Antonio Galloni, who does the wine reviews for Robert Parker's Wine Advocate. What are you getting here? You like it? Or was it... No, it's... I did, it wasn't, it wasn't, I was expecting like, um... The funky, earthy? The funk. Got it, yeah. So the earth is subtle. It's, yeah. it's, the earth is subtle, but it's there for me. It's rounded out with like lilac flowers. I get some really interesting like black raspberry kind of component coming through. And there's a little bit of plumness with a little bit of spiciness as well, a little black pepper. Let's give it a whirl. I know I like this wine because I almost drank half of it. I spit out some, but this has incredible elegance, gorgeous mouthfeel. The silkiness on your palate here is almost unattainable in most wines under $100. The alcohol is under control, but there, the tannin structure is extremely focused, great backbone, and it's kind of like when you have a good, you know, um, a great, like, um, workout and you're working on your core, you know, 
this wine is strong and powerful, yet has great elegance. It really reminds me of, you know, like a classic female in some ways, you know, just beautiful, but with like a really strong personality, like a, a gorgeous mom that ran the household in the 1800s, you know, the backbone of the family, beautiful in her feminine ways, and this wine has a lot of feminine to it, but some great power and no backing up. There's some great charcoal and smokiness on the finish. This wine will last for 13 years, at least, and I think Antonio Galloni knocks it out of the park, and I would say he's a point low. 92 points on this wine. It is spectacular, a classic example of what Barbera di Alba can bring to the table, and one of the more interesting wines um, I've had from Italy, under 25 bucks, barely, and maybe, a month or two, and that, that excites me because I've had a whole bunch. Love this wine, gorgeous. And Viette, one of the great producers um, in all of Piedmonte, uh, coming with one of their classic Barberas, really is gonna have to raise the bar. I'm sure, curious to see what's happening here. Viette 07, which again, both the 07s are incredibly interesting wines. Scarone, uh, Barbera di Alba, 93 points, Antonio Galloni, 38 US dollars. And again, in my opinion, Viette, one of the great producers in all of Italy, let alone um, Piedmonte, some great Barolo in my lifetime from this gorgeous producer. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. And it's a little bit more of a closed nose. This is starting to already get into serious kind of action. And again, 38 bucks, you're starting to talk about, you know, Barolo price points, Barbaresco price points. So, you know, as many people look at Barbera di Alba as more of an entry into this great world of, you know, Barbera-based uh, wines, um, it, it, it's interesting to see that it's pushing the envelope of some of the best Dolcetto-based wines, Nebbiolo, excuse me, based wines, um, and so that's kind of interesting. Very dark nose, you know, almost like the night, you know, nighttime. A little bit of a Twizzler-like red fruit, believe it or not. Pretty. It's opening up for me quite nicely as I bang on it and swirl on it here. And as you can see, I'm getting really focused. A little less joking now. We're getting a little more nerd and focused. Not even nerd. I'm not throwing out the facts, but I'm very intriguing. These wines definitely bring me in. I'm a more seduced kind of, you know, wine structure that I love so much. Let's give it a shot. one is definitely more aggressive than it, its predecessor. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Very fresh and vibrant. Uh, I do appreciate some of the dark features in this wine. It's got a little bit less um, appeal on the palate immediately because it's still quite tight. This wine is very, very young. And I'm actually a little bit disappointed um, in kind of picking it, maybe even to taste today, because I'm very familiar with Viette's ability to be very closed in its early years. This wine is still very, very tight. It's really kind of maybe underwhelming and it's showing today. Uh, Antonio Galloni, who's a, a producer, excuse me, a wine critic that I have enormous respect for, <coughs> gave it a very big score, <coughs> excuse me, with 93 points. I just don't really see it uh, showing that much potential underneath its tannic structure. I, I do see potential. It is opening up nicely. But I, I believe that some of the flavors are kind of, you know, solid, but not exciting. And, you know, I gotta be honest with you, um, the Sigliuti shows a little bit more of a, a pizzazz and maybe a balance that the Viette isn't showing. And this is power and it's to be respected, but it's okay. And um, to me, it's a 90 point wine, which is a great score. But being a huge bandwagon fan of Viette's wines in general and loving Barbera di Alba, I am a hair disappointed. And I don't want anybody who's watching this that is um, educated or, or knowledgeable about wine to think I'm me missing the boat or being distracted or, or swayed in its youth or tannin structure. I, I was brought up on young wine, being a wine buyer, I taste most vintages early on. I'm not confused what's going on here. I'm just not that excited about it. Um, where it's at at this point. It's very good wine. It's very good wine. Let me do this. As you can see, I'm in a zone here a little bit.
comes down to flavor. This wine has more oomph and shows its power over the Silicute. I just like the flavors of this wine. There's really no difference. A very well-made, top-notch pizza is gonna show itself better maybe than a really, really good burger. But if you just like burgers more, you're gonna like it more than a better made, more high-end pizza. And that's kind of apples and oranges, and this is more oranges and oranges, but at the end of the day, their flavor profiles are apples and oranges, and my palate sways towards this flavor, even though I'm aware that this might have more classic structure and style, and thus, this for my palate is a 92-point wine, and the Viette is a 90-point wine, but both are spectacular, and if you're not exploring Barbera di Alba, and I think you guys have watched a thousand shows Hopefully, you watched maybe you know ten or fifty or maybe a hundred shows. Uh, you're gonna kind of understand that I got into this show a little bit more because these wines are showing really well, and I'm completely in high belief that Barbera di Alba is a value play in today's wine world. Question of the day, just triggered at the end here. Don't figure it out mathematically. Gut feel from the hip. How many shows of Wine Library TV have you seen? You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.